there's rumors that this project started before I even got on board. They say it was supposed to take three months and we would be done with this. But instead, we are still working on it. The ghost of the data migration keeps following me everywhere. I've tried hacking away at it. Tools of code and other techie things. This week, I believe we have killed the general ledger account data, finally. I hope it does not resurrect again. The seances must be working. That was my tribute to Halloween. I hope you all have a safe and happy Halloween. Um, I did want to go through real quickly the data migration piece and explain in a little bit more detail what it means that we've been in the data migration for this long, why it takes so long, where we're at, and what is left to do with data migration. So I have that posted on SharePoint and I'm just going to walk you through it right now. And then every once in a while I'll be able to walk you through it um, as we continue to work through this migration piece. I think it's a little bit more complicated than people might assume. So. So I've created this table that shows you the various tasks involved with the data migration piece. Since my webcam was glitchy, you get me again. So I'm just going to talk you through this table. You can go on SharePoint and check it out yourself. Basically, I've broken down the data migration into seven steps, and some of them can be repeated depending on the success or failure of another step. And I've defined each step in the SharePoint site as well. So we have the extract, which is us getting the data from sales from SysPro. We also have to identify from that point, once we have the data, what we want to migrate over, how we want to migrate it over, and if there's anything that doesn't match, what can we do to get that data over into the new system still? And by match, I mean, I think I've used this example before of like trying to put like a cube, cube in a circle, and then like they don't always fit. Um, so that's like a lot of times what data migration is involved in is how do we fit this thing into this thing and it, it doesn't really work all the time. So you have to do some manipulation, you have to make some assumptions on it. So um, we're doing that. Then once we figure out all of that, which some of you probably have heard me or read an email from me asking like, hey, what does this mean if we do this, this, and this? Um, or I've had conversations with people about what exactly does it mean when you put a vehicle on hold 71 or whatever? Um, and that's all trying to figure out how do I appropriately migrate that data over. So once we have that um, set with all of our assumptions that we are forced to make, we can try to load the data. So once we load the data, that's great, but how do we know that the assumptions that we made in step two actually translate in the way that we expected them to? Well, we have to check the data and make sure that it's valid and that everything got pushed over as expected, that we didn't accidentally say all of St. Louis North's inventory is actually all of Dallas's inventory because St. Louis North is a one one and Dallas is um, another branch and we ac accidentally switched the number or something. So this is all involved in validating the data. We want to make sure that, you know, we didn't transfer the vehicles that were red now are blue in the system. And it causes confusion and it, um, it's just not a very good data implementation. So that's part of the reason why this has taken quite a bit of time. Because once we validate it, then I have to identify what the errors are. The first time around, because they were doing this all um, generally manually, I mean, we're not using software to automate the entire process for us. Um, we are using Excel Power Query, which is very useful, but it still is a lot of manual work. We have to make sure that we didn't, um, or we have to fix the errors that we identify. And so, for example, the general ledger data, um, and for those of you who have no idea what general ledger is, as I did not before I started this project, um, it's just a list of all of our accounts. It's a way for accounting to organize the finances in a way that um, allows them to better manage it. It's a really high level non-accounting way of saying that. They might disagree with me and there might be a better way to say it. Um, or maybe I'm off base, but that's my understanding. 
of it. And so, um, you know, we accidentally assumed that the CISPRO data would be correct, which was, most people would probably say a pretty good assumption, but um, on the setup of the branches, so that if I have an account that has a branch attached to it, then in the separate field, that's a second field, that branch would match. And the, found out that it didn't match all the time. And so we had to go back through and we figured out that hey, these two branches are actually the wrong branches, and we switched it. We duplicated 17 and 18, and we don't have any data for 25 and 26. So this looks promising as why we're seeing the data off. And um, lo and behold, we find out that the CISPRO data, original data set, was set up incorrectly. Um, and so that is an assumption that we made that we could use the group field, this field that was set up wrong, to identify what branch it was belonging to, and we had to use a different field. So we fixed the error, we reloaded it, and then I checked it out, and it looks pretty good right now. Um, hence my, I think we've killed the ghosts of the general ledger data in my video. Um, so we just have to do a trial balance run on it and make sure that the trial balances, and which is just like a report to make sure that all the summaries on the accounts match. So I have all of the summaries on the periods um, for like each month's close or whatever. It should all equal out zero and it is. Um, and I just wanna make sure that the trial balances are um, in line with that as well. And then we can check that off the list and move on to other things. So that's kind of, if you're looking at the table in SharePoint, steps four and five of validating fixing errors, I guess really three, four and five, you repeat because then you have to reload the data, validate it again, identify any errors, fix the errors, reload it. Then hopefully you only have to do that a couple times maximum. Ideally, never. But um, since we're doing it manually, it's expected that there will be errors. And then we can finally load it into production. And of course, we're not just going to let it sit in production and assume that the data went over correctly because it did in the testing environment. Um, you know, anything can happen, something can glitch, you never know. So it's just best practice to confirm that that's right in the production environment. The chance of it being right the first time is much higher. Um, I would say close to 100% in production, but I say that now when I haven't done any of this yet. So um, that's kind of where we are. And then I list all of the data sets that we have. And so as you can see on this table here, I think there's like 13 or 16 data sets where just the general ledger summary data, I think is close to 80,000 records. And so um, that's quite a bit of data to make sure that you are catching all of the nuances with it um, and making sure that you're able to load it correctly so that when you switch as a user, when you switch from the CISPRO to Salesforce, you don't see any of that craziness that I had to go through to get it to where it is. You just see that the data looks right, or at least that's the goal. So. That's why it's taking so long. Um, thanks for watching as always. That's all I have.